Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are 10-minute talks that give a high-level overview or an in-depth look at a small portion of a PHP-related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for long-time speakers to test drive new talk ideas. Right now we have Chris Tankersley, who previously gave a great Lightning Talk on software licenses. Tonight he'll be talking about static sites with Sculpin. Please make sure you visit Joined In after the talk and leave Chris some feedback. Chris, take it away. Okay. Let's get this shared. Okay, does that all look good? Okay. Um, well, uh, thanks, Cal, for having me back. Um, today I am going to go over Sculpin um, just to get stuff out of the way if my clicker wants to work. There we go. Um, I've been a PHP developer for about 10 years, and I've got a page up on GitHub if anybody wants to look at my code. Um, but since I've been a PHP developer for 10 years, uh, I did lots of websites before that as well. So I come back from the days where we had to deal with like Netscape 3 and static sites and doing all of that. And then migrated into to a little bit of Perl development PHP. And for the last 10 years, I've been building a lot of stuff in PHP, but sometimes getting back to static is a preferential in, in many different projects. Um, so for me, uh, I found this project called Sculpin, which from its website, it is a static site generator written in PHP. It will convert markdown files, twig templates, or standard HTML into a static HTML site. Um, that can easily be deployed. This was built, uh, this is a project by Bo Simonson, um, and it really, really helps kind of fill that gap between needing full, the full power of PHP and not really needing any power at all. Because what it's going to do is it's going to turn um, a bunch of different files sitting on your hard drive and kind of stitch them together as a complete website without you having to deal with all the stuff that normally goes into handling flat HTML sites. There's other sites like, there are other programs like this, probably the most uh, well-known is Jekyll, which GitHub uses, um, and Octopress, which is kind of built on top of Jekyll. Uh, both of these are Ruby programs, but they're the same idea. You write a bunch of static files and then Jekyll and Octopress's systems will stitch it all together for you. For Python, there's one called Pelican, and for PHP, there's actually quite a few of them, but the two that I was most familiar with when I was looking at doing this was Frozen and PyCrust. I believe Sculpin is newer than PyCrust, um, and I think Frozen is the, the newest out of the three here. There's a whole bunch of different ones. So if you're looking at getting into this, the static site generation kind of stuff, um, you probably want to do this for stuff that really doesn't require PHP. For example, I just moved over uh, one of the sites that I do for a local theater troupe. Uh, it was running in Drupal and for a long time was in a, a custom CMS. But realistically, I'm only updating that site four, maybe five times a year when we have new shows. So all the overhead for Drupal is really not needed. Uh, a lot of brochure sites with basic blogs don't really need constant updates or the power that PHP provides because they're just not updating. Even with caching, the site's not changing very much. Since you're getting rid of PHP, static sites are really, really quick and they're very, very low on resources. So if you have a box and you put want to put many sites up on there, static sites are obviously not going to take as much memory uh, or CPU because the uh, the web server is just going to take the files and just directly serve them. Now, as opposed to using straight HTML, if you're using some, a static site generator, it lets you use existing tools, which is one of the reasons why I love Sculpin. Sculpin itself is written in PHP, so I can extend it in any way I want. And it uses kind of an existing tool chain because I already know how to use the templating system built into it. And I can use a lot of the tools for deployment. 
so I don't really need to learn anything new. Now, Sculpin itself is made of a couple different pieces. Uh, it's built on top of some Symphony components, specifically like the HTTP kernel, and that kind of gives a little glue layer around how the, the, the actual application is run. It's not a full Symphony 2 app, it just uses some of the Symphony 2 components. It also uses an embedded version of Composer to, to handle some of the Composer-specific download stuff. Um, so you don't have to use this with, in addition to Composer, it actually runs it inside of itself. It uses React to uh, run a specialized uh, development server that will actually watch for files as you change them and recompile the entire site, which is really nice. So you don't have to constantly be recompiling the site, it'll do it on its own. And then it's also going to use Twig as a template engine. So if you're familiar with Symfony components using Twig, uh, or you've used Twig in any other project, Twig is all built in. There's nothing special you have to do, so you can take complete advantage of all the power that Twig will give you. Now, a basic Sculpin site is fairly simple. Sculpin is a FAR file that you download, um, so you can just grab it straight off their site, throw it in a directory, and then it just needs a source directory um, with either HTML or Markdown um, or Twig files. In this case, I've got a Markdown file. So this would build just a basic one-page site. Inside each of the content files, in this case our index file, there's going to be two sections. There's a kind of header and metadata section at the top, which is denoted by the three dashed lines, and here it's line one, one and three. And in between those, you can really set any kind of extra metadata you want. The key to this is when Sculpin parses all your files, it will look for this kind of metadata section and know that it needs to kind of mangle it and turn it into a full site. Uh, or a, a full, fully fleshed out page, which we'll see here in a little bit. And then below that, everything else is just content. So in this case, we're going to just dump out Hello World. And here, so we will run the FAR file, we'll tell it to generate, and we'll also tell it to boot up its internal server. So it will go through, in this case, I've only got one file, but it would scan the entire source directory, find anything that it needs to touch and mess with and kind of stitch everything together. And since I'm using the internal server, it's going to boot up uh, a, a version of PHP on, on port 8000. So if I go to localhost 8000, I'll get just hello world. Now that's not terribly useful because we're not building one page sites and realistically one page sites we can, uh, we can just do with straight HTML. So we usually get into a situation where we need templates. So extending what we have before, all we need to do is add an underscore views directory in source, and in this case I've put a twig file, so I've just named it layout.twig. And in there is just a twig template. There's nothing special here. You don't have to do any extra work. Um, so I've got a basic HTML setup with a title. I set up a style with background colors, and on line 12 we have just a regular uh, twig block, in this case called content, which we're going to dump all of our text into. Now Sculpin doesn't automatically use the layout files, you have to kind of tell it um, conceptually where things are at. So in our index.markdown file, we're going to go ahead and add a layout meta tag, and this will then turn around and pull that layout out and start to use it for our text. Now as you dig more into Sculpin, it will take full advantage of Twig. Uh, template inheritance, so you don't have to specify layouts for every single file, but in this case we do because this is kind of our, our top level. So then when this goes, so there we have our, our layout file. So when this generates, and I saved everybody their eyes because white text on blue backgrounds look really, really bad, uh, when we look at the actual source of the site, it took our template file and then down here on line 12 actually stuck our content in there. So we're uh, everything's all nicely stitched together. Now that was one piece of uh, just flat HTML that's being generated. One of the big things about Sculpin is that you can have what are basically custom content types. So the, the canonical example is a blog, and there there is a, a blog skeleton you can go get, but what you need to do is basically set up this kernel file, which we'll, we'll go over here in just a second, that has some setup for Sculpin so that it knows like here's custom post types, here's some other data for the site. 
And then since we're going to have individual posts, we're going to create an underscore post directory. And your custom content types are always underscore and the name of the content type. So I've just grabbed all the my blog posts from my blog this year. And we just tell Sculpin where it is. So in that uh, kernel.yaml file, we just tell it we have some custom content types named posts. And the only thing I need to do is define a permalink, and that's just specifically for Sculpin to, to know how to generate the URLs for it. But that's all there is. I don't have to define any metadata. Everything just kind of works. Um, and then in our index.md file, we just need to tell it to use that data source. Sculpin will automatically figure out the custom content type from here, find the appropriate directory, organize all that data. And then down here on 9, 10, and 11, we've got uh, this data variable and inside that posts. So now I can actually loop through the posts. So I'm going to just very simply loop through every single post and just dump out the title. But that's all it takes to create a custom content type. So inside my post, the metadata section, I can throw any kind of metadata in here I want. I don't have to tell Sculpin about it ahead of time. It's basically completely schemaless. So in here on my blog post, I always have a layout file, uh, a title, date that the post was generated on, whether or not I've got comments, because I use, I use discuss, and even categories. And then the rest of it's just straight markdown content. And then when we generate the site, we end up with uh, our hello world from earlier, and then just a listing of all the titles for Sculpin, or all the, the individual post types. Now when it comes to deployment, um, it's really, really easy. You can just pick however you want to do it. There's nothing special. When you generate the site, you'll get uh, an outport, uh, output underscore uh, dev or prod or whatever environment you decide to, to use. By default, it will do output underscore dev. Everything in that folder is your static generated site. You just take everything in that folder and FTP it or rsync it or SFTP it or whatever, however you want to do it. I actually have a script set up that when I push to my Git repo, it will go and create a Docker file, uh, spin up a Docker instance, do all the, the Git stuff, and then push it off. So you can decide how you want to deploy it. Uh, the one that I did for the theater troupe, I literally just set up a tiny shared host, FTP'd it up today, and that was all it was. Um, if you want more information on it, uh, you can go to sculpin.io, which is the main website for it, or it is available on GitHub at github.com slash sculpin slash sculpin, or you can follow them on Twitter uh, at getsculpin. Um, I've kind of just scratched the surface. Uh, Bo especially has many different examples on his own personal blog on how you can do different things. The documentation can sometimes be uh, a little bit obtuse, and Bo... Uh, has said himself that the best way is to go look at some of the, the open source things that have been built with Sculpin and, and you can kind of piece things together. So uh, Joe mentioned it a little bit beforehand, but uh, I've got my, uh, I put everything up on joined in. So please go rate it as well as Jeremy and Ryan here later. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at DragonManTank, or you can send me an email at chris at ctankersley.com. Um, Otherwise, I went a little bit over my 10 minutes, but uh, I will be in the, the chat room if anybody has any questions. Um, but otherwise, thank you very much. All right. Thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. Uh, if you'd like to give a Lightning Talk, please send me an email, joe at nomadphp.com. Make sure you visit, join in, and leave Chris some feedback. Thanks a lot.